You are a great professor at a very important uh, high-ranked, uh, Shanghai-ranking university. Uh, my hero, Thomas Mann, when he came to your country in 1938, uh, giving his lecture to, on the town hall lectures on the, the coming victory of democracy, the coming victory of democracy. He started this lecture, uh, you know, who am I? You know, I'm coming from uh, uh, Hitler, Germany. Who am I, you American people, the country of Whit Whitman and Lincoln to, to tell you about democracy? And, uh, and then he said, well, he said, but you know, with my experience, I know something you Americans probably are not that aware of because I come from the city where Mr. Hitler, uh, and we, we, you know, we lived in this, the same city already for, for, for 20 years. I saw, I saw this growing fascist movement. And he said, one of the things I learned is that the essence of democracy, just as Svetlana said, is not only you know, free of freedom of votes and, and that kind of stuff. It's not even institutions. It's the spirit of a democracy. If you don't have... If you don't cultivate the spirit of a democracy, then the democracy will die, the institutions, etc., etc. And he said, so how can you take care for the spirit of a democracy? It's about education. It's the, 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 the base of a democracy is, he said, the aim of a democracy is elevating people and therefore it aims at education, to make people aware of science, religion, art, whatever, whatever. Now, coming from the leading of the free world, uh, which says everything about Europe, that America is still the leader of the free world. Um, if there's a free world, King, I know that. Um, uh, uh, now, then the question is, you know, if, if we see what's happening in America all the time, because in this country we know more about what's happening in America than what happens in, in Belgium or, or Germany, um, what is going on with your educational system? I think uh, those of us who work in the education world are sometimes, we're, we're subject to the delusion that somehow... We, if we can just order the universities rightly, or if we can order the school systems rightly, we can change the world, that this will be the source mm -hmm. of the revolution of hope. Right. And I think what we really do have to acknowledge, and you wrote a book called The Spirit of the Age, that the spirit of the age, the geist uh, that governs a society at any particular time, is the deepest teacher. It's the deepest teacher. It shapes and guides, in a sense, every institution. So in the Middle Ages, the spirit of the age was to know God, and it's the insane. universities were oriented to knowing God. And in, uh, you know, in, the, in, the, uh, the, the, in, the, in the ancient world, it was philosophy, it was to know the truth, and the early schools were oriented to knowing the truth. Today, the spirit of the age is, is essentially the expansion of the human, of the Baconian project of mastering nature, of mastering human nature, of the natural world, of turning everything into an object of use, of something manipulable, mm -hmm. alterable, subject uh, to our control, and therefore ultimately oriented to our comfort, but which is ultimately, to go back to the idea of the boomerang, is ultimately hollowing out the very idea of what it is to be a human. Because ultimately it's about the replacement of the human being, right? The, so, but the idea of the machine. So, so if we really want to, for education, Mm -hmm. to be the source of change. Sadly, we have to change the spirit of the age. And we're in a, we're in a bit of a, you know, sort of a, a, a chicken and egg situation here because how does one do but, that? But, uh, you, can you, you not start? Uh, yes, just, of course. Just, but no, you, need, mean, to be, uh, the, you the, need to be a contrarian in, your, in the institutions that are otherwise right. slavish to the spirit of the age. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, and you can't expect people to interpret the spirit of the age if we don't give them the tools with which to of do course. that. We need to be teaching civics in a way that makes government relevant to people's day-to-day -day lives, which we've never done. We need to teach critical thinking. And as we've seen most importantly, I think, we need to teach media literacy. We need to? Media literacy. Yes. And we don't do any of yeah, those you know things. What's the problem? Because our teachers well. The problem is that in the last 30 years, uh, people turn away from humanities. They go into, yep. into computer science. Mm -hmm. So we're discussing morals here and ethics and stuff like that and history because we have to know history. And you see that lots of people, for example, if you, if you take a history student today and it, it, you say something that happened 60 years ago or 1,000 years ago, it's all the same. It's the past. So they have, they have lost a sense of the past. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean... Greece is very famous for its poetry, let's say. How many people actually read poetry nowadays? I mean, poetry has become even more difficult for, for an intellectual. Uh, how many people actually, you said about critical theory, you meet people who actually know everything that has been written about Moby Dick and haven't read the novel yet. Back home, <laughs> I returned from exile some years ago to discover five years, seven years after my return, that history had been abolished 
in the schools. History was not being taught in Nigeria for nearly 10. The military came, and for some reason or the other, they decided we did not need history. I said, it is not possible, but it was true. Now an effort is being made to restore that, but they're looking for teachers because the teachers went into business <laughs> yeah. since they were not needed or something like that. You don't need history in order to make money. I mean, that, and <laughs> increasingly, increasingly, um, this pressure to make education functional to business comes from government. I mean, it's part of the rhetoric of all governments. It's part of the accountability system. And it's also, um, it's also, it also reflects a fear on the part of students. Their future is much less secure than it used to be. So what is useful knowledge? What, 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 what helps you get on? Yeah. And, and, if, and if that's, the, if that's your uh, drive, then, you know, myths and history and literature well, are not important.